Hi, I'm Miss Stephanie. I'm going to go over the anesthesia machine with you all today. So um, <clears throat> this is one of the three different types of anesthesia machines that we have here at Pima Seattle. Uh, the major components are all the same. The configurations are just slightly different. So you do want to make sure you um, get really comfortable with the, uh, the general components that you're going to see. Um, and you can always look at other images online as well to see different types so that uh, if you happen to see any of the other ones that we have here, you can recognize the parts and pieces. Um, all right, so first thing you want to do after you get your machine out um, is you want to go ahead and hook it up to oxygen. This particular machine always goes on station two because it is the longer oxygen cord because our connection's over there. Um, we do have a hook in the ceiling that we put it up onto. Uh, you can always ask for help if you're not tall enough to get it there. Um, make sure you do that because we don't want the cord hanging, hanging and being a tripping hazard. Uh, you're also going to want to make sure you ask an instructor, an instructor to make sure that oxygen is on. That is, um, it's your responsibility to make sure it's on, but only instructors are allowed to turn oxygen on and off in the oxygen closet, which is located in the kennel room. All right, so uh, green for oxygen, right? So this is my oxygen line. There's a toggle on here, you can pull it, you got some leeway. And I can see green here as well, so I know I'm looking it up to the right one. This, uh, this little um, slip, uh, collar right here, it slips down. When it slips down, it, it unlocks so that this can come out. So one thing I commonly see students do is after they hook it in, um, if they're, they're trying to get it tight, they will grab the collar and accidentally pull on it and then they're like, oh, it won't, it won't stay. It's probably because you're touching the collar. So don't touch the collar and I'm just going to, you kind of, you'll feel it click. It'll make a little click and then pull on it. Give it a nice you know, not super, you know, firm pull, and if it doesn't come out, you're good. So we are now attached to oxygen. And then there's another port here for the, for the machine that will go here for the station. All right, so back to our machine. All right, so our oxygen is coming in uh, to our machine, and you'll see it, uh, it has a splitter here in the back. It's gonna enter into this part of our machine, which is known as our flow meter, right? This is your oxygen flow meter. Um, you'll notice that uh, off to the side, it does say liters per minute. So it tells you what your unit is right on the machine. Um, to turn it on, you'll just turn to the left and the bead will move up. Uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Don't over tighten this when you turn it off. You want to just, as soon as the ball hits the bottom, you stop because you, you, this will, um, you'll have, end up ruining the threads. So uh, if I want to turn on oxygen, the middle of the ball is where I'm at. So this line, this first line is one, this line right here is one and a half, and then it goes two, two and a half, three, and so on. This, uh, this cover has a magnifier on it actually. So if you spin this, it will magnify it for you. If it's difficult for you to read, you can always um, turn that on or turn that over. And then again, the center of the ball. So I centered the ball there. So now I know the oxygen is at 1.5 liters per minute. Turn that off. You'll notice too here at the split as the oxygen comes in, it splits off to another part right here. This is another piece of our machine. This is my flush valve. When I hit this button, it sends fresh oxygen through, bypassing all of the other gas and other parts of the machine. So this is just straight oxygen going right through to our patient. Um, and you guys will learn about when you should and shouldn't use that. We're gonna use this for um, doing our pressure test on the machine, which will be another video. <clears throat> all right, so oxygen has now um, entered the machine through the flow meter. You dial up how much oxygen you want. It then comes out through this tube right here and if we follow this down this is kind of the key anytime you pull a machine out and you're getting comfortable with it or you're hooking something up just follow the flow of the tubes that's going to give you the best understanding of where everything is at so oxygen comes through this line and it comes into my vaporizer ours is purple for isofluorine right um, it would be yellow if it were SIVO you'll notice on top there it actually says inlet on here and then it says outlet on there these just, these connect, um, we don't take those off, but these connect uh, directly to the vaporizer. So my oxygen is now going into my vaporizer um, and it's in the name, that's what it's doing, right? Isoflooring is a liquid um, material that we, uh, you actually will fill it in here. You wanna make sure that it is full. 
As oxygen comes through, it vaporizes that liquid and turns it into a gas, and oxygen is the carrier gas and carries um, our anesthetic gas through the outlet. All right. So right here on our, um, in, um, on our vaporizer, you can see this little gauge. This is how you'll tell whether it is full or not. This is uh, the next thing you're going to want to do. Again, if you're following your flow, you'll look here and you make sure um, you want, you can see that this is really low. This would need to be refilled. You can see the little uh, meniscus here of the fluid. Uh, you would just tell your instructor that you need isofluorine. They will either fill it for you or they will watch you do it. We do, your instructor does need to be there or do it themselves um, because it can cause a big mess if the isofluorine spills or the bottle breaks or if you leave this open too long. It will kind of vaporize into the air. It's a little volatile. All right, so you want your meniscus to be uh, at this top arrow is what you're looking for. So we'll fill it to there. So um, the rule here at Pima is we always want it full and that's really what you should do anywhere you work. Um, anytime you're about to start an anesthetic procedure, you don't know how long it's gonna be. You don't know the last time someone else put in it, put flu uh, the, uh, isofluorine into the machine. So go ahead and just fill it all the way up. You're not hurting anything. This is my dial um, on my vaporizer to turn isofluorine on. There's a lock right here, so right now I can't turn it. This is my little um, notch telling me where I'm at. I push this down. I only need to push this down to, to unlock it. Then I don't need to push it down anymore. Now I can turn it up as much as I want. So that's how you will turn your dial, and it clicks so you can feel it. So right now I am at 1.5% isofluorine. That's the unit. It's percent. Uh, so basically the percent of the gas the animal is breathing is 1.5% uh, isofluorine. I can go to zero and it will stop pushing out isofluorine. I don't have to go all the way to off. Uh, but if you're gonna leave the machine, you should always go to off. But if we're just disconnecting to move our patient, zero is fine. You'll notice I have it turned on right now and I am not worried about passing out from breathing in isofluorine, right? That is because it cannot go through without my oxygen being on. If I turned my oxygen on, then yes, there would be isofluorine coming out right now. But remember, it's liquid until the oxygen goes through and vaporizes it and carries it out. We'll turn this back off. All right, so my oxygen has come into my vaporizer. It is now gonna come out of my vaporizer to this tube here. I keep spinning my machine so you can see where we're going. Following my tube, and it comes here to the splitter. Um, <clears throat> Make sure you feel comfortable with what's, how, uh, what's being divided where, because when it comes to the non-rebreathing circuit, which we will have a separate video for, you're gonna need to know, this is where you would disconnect and attach it. Um, and you're gonna need to know what material you need. So we'll discuss that in a different video, but I can see that this, um, this is the flush valve we already looked at. So, so um, my, my gas is not going that way. This is oxygen coming in if I were to push uh, that button or yeah, push the button. Um, and then I see that this tube comes up here. What it's doing is it is coming into this part of the machine, okay? This whole portion of the machine is strictly for rebreathing circuits, all right? Which is why when we use a non-rebreather, we will disconnect at that um, juncture. So this is all rebreathing circuit stuff. So um, here I have my manometer, all right? And it gives you the units on it. It tells you it's centimeters of water. It's the only one that we measure pressure with that unit, but that's the one that it is. So centimeters of water, and we'll talk about um, where you wanna put this gauge to or what numbers you're looking for when we do our pressure check. <clears throat> then it's gonna come into, you'll see here, inhalation valve and exhalation valve. So this tells you how you need to hook up your rebreathing circuit. Uh, inhalation, this is the, what the animal is gonna be breathing. So you wanna make sure this is attached to the tube going directly to the animal. For some circuits, it doesn't matter, but we'll go over that in the rebreathing circuit video. I have a flutter valve here. You will actually see this move as gas and is moving through and the animal is breathing. There's another flutter valve here at the um, exhalation side. So my gas comes through here, the animal breathes it, uh, they exhale, and then, that, and then this guy right here is my soda lime canister. So this is my CO2 absorbing. Again, it's a, uh, for rebreathing circuits. So if they're rebreathing, that means uh, we have to filter what they have exhaled. They're rebreathing back what they've exhaled. So um, we're gonna, more, more gas and oxygen is gonna mix with it, uh, but we need to pull that carbon dioxide out, and that's what this container is uh, here for. So now that we're on this container, I wanna tell you a couple things you're gonna look at. <clears throat> you want to double check uh, the dates and stuff here. You'll see this is a bit out of date since we haven't had surgeries in a little while. Um, 
Canister, uh, the soda lime is good for six to eight hours of use or 30 days since it was last changed. So we have a date here for the last time it was changed. So check that date. If it's been 30 days, let your instructor know we need to change the soda lime. Um, if the date is good, then you're gonna come here to the time. This is something you're gonna rec record when your surgery is over. This is part of your post-op procedures. Um, you're gonna actually record how much time was the animal uh, or was anesthesia running off of this machine. Um, so we write it in total hours and minutes in time format, so you can just see that. So this one has only had a barely two hours on it. So you might think, oh, it's only two hours. I don't need to change it. It's also not purple, which is something people look for, right? But look at the date. This is back in February, so this obviously needs to be changed. So you'll just let your instructor know. If it was holding a purple color, that would be another indication to me that it should be changed. Note, though, that when the machine is working, your soda lime will turn purple and that's okay. It's when it turns purple and stays purple even after it's not been used that that indicates to you. But you can see this is old and should be changed, uh, but it hasn't turned purple yet. And that's because we haven't actually used it very much. All right, um, so they, uh, they exhale right through here. Um, it circulates through. Uh, this guy right here, this is where my bag will hang, my reservoir bag, right? Um, and we'll show you that uh, during the hookup. The reservoir bag, remember, this is where they're actively breathing from, right? So it, it, uh, it's analogous to their lungs, so it should be about lung size. And whenever it empties, that is them taking a breath. They have breathed from that bag, and then when they exhale, you'll see it fill back up. Um, and then everything will pass through here to be filtered, and the process just keeps going through cyclically. So you'll notice I'll have, uh, I'll have lines here to my patient, I'll have a bag here, and then I've got this fun guy, this little... Um, valve essentially that things are coming through this is my pop-off valve this closes my circuit off so when we do a pressure check we're going to talk about turning this off which again righty tighty you wind it all the way down you want to make sure this is always open unless you are actively turning it off for some reason so as i'm here looking at my machine and getting ready to hook it up one of my natural things i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this left and make sure it's nice and open up you don't ever want this to accidentally be closed when you have a patient attached you will close it at times, but we'll talk about that during our pressure check. And how this closes off the circuit is because of this exit. So this is my exit. This just has this little, this is just an adapter um, for the tube. So this is where um, my, sca uh, my scavenging system is going to pull out any excess air, um, any exhausted stuff, any excess gas. All of the excess stuff that the patient isn't using and the machine isn't using is going to come through here and exit the machine. So that's why when I close this down, I've turned the exit off. So when this is attached to a patient, there's nowhere else for this gas to go except to the patient. So that's why this valve is, can be very dangerous uh, because you can overinflate lungs and cause um, collapsed lung, ruptured lung, lots of problems. Um, all right, so this is where I'll put my scavenger system. Okay, this, we do not have an active system here, we have a passive. So my tube would come down to here. This is my scavengering system, this is a passive system. Um, it says F air on it. That's a common, that is a trade name, but it's a common name. It's a, it's a charcoal filter essentially, or passive, um, passive scavenging system. So my tube, which will be a blue tube will come off of here into my scavenging system. And this protects everyone around uh, the patient to ensure they're not breathing in excess gas that has been pushed out. So now that I've come to this part of my machine, the first thing I want to do is grab this and I want to look at the back and I want to take a look at the weight. So every time this gets used, it's going to be weighed and it tells you, it actually tells you right on the canister, uh, we're going to replace after 50 grams increase. All right. So when you, if, uh, if you have to change this or if it's the first time it's being used, you need to weigh it at the gram scale, which we have um, over on the other side of the classroom, and write down the initial weight, put the date and put your initials. All right. And then if uh, now what, what, what I would do using this machine is I would go ahead and I would weigh it and I would look at the original weight and I would ask myself, is it 50 grams over? If it is, it just goes in the trash. It's not hazardous. Uh, you throw it away and you get yourself a fresh one in the cabinet over there, uh, which I will show you when we do our machine hookup. And that, oh, one more thing I'll just note, uh, this little pocket right here holds your lubrication for the eyes and your syringe that we use to puff our cuff on our endotracheal tubes. This should always be a 12 milliliter syringe only because we never want to put more than 10 milliliters of air into our cuff. 
This always needs to go back in here. Uh, if you use it to puff your cuffs, it goes back in here. Even though you may need to use it again, you always want to put it back here because we don't want to have to be struggling to find a syringe to deflate a cuff in an emergency situation when an animal is flailing and they have a tube in their throat. Um, this is just a little elbow that we'll use later. And that is the anesthesia machine.